And uh, you've also been calling for to get rid of uh, Menendez, I know. Um, but first, before we talk about that, what's your reaction to the exp expulsion? Well, it's like uh, I'm not surprised. But but to me, I think the, the more important picture is is that we have a colleague in, in the Senate that actually did much more sinister and, and serious kinds of things. Uh, Senator Menendez, uh, he needs to go. Um, and if you are going to expel Santos, how can you allow to somebody like in Menendez to remain in the Senate. You know, Santos's kind of lies were almost, you know, funny. And like, you know, he, you know, landed on the moon and it got kind of stuff. Uh, whereas, <laughs> whereas, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, Menendez, I think, is really a senator for Egypt. Especially, it's kind of strange that if Santos uh, is not allowed to remain in the House, you know, someone like that. You know. Are you, though, uncomfortable with the fact that there hasn't been an adjudication, that while he's been charged, there hasn't been a conviction? Menendez. With Menendez. Uh, I, I, I am. I, I am. And it's like he has the right uh, to, for his, his day in court and all of it, but he doesn't have the right to, to have those kind of votes and things that uh, yeah. th that's not that's not a right. And Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You like that, dude? Welcome to <laughs> you can tell when Wayne's up at three in the morning. <laughs> we got new graphics. We got no intros. My man, my man, Fetterman. <laughs> welcome to the Wayne the Free Show. Glad to have you. Let me introduce the Godfather of Conservative Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Uh, hello, everybody. Just glad to be here. Trying to figure out why my volume's so low, uh, but we, we will figure it out. Uh, nice clip on the intro. Thank you. Yeah, I, when I found that, and we'll get to that in just a second. Let me introduce the Jr. the Junior, Jr. Robinson. What's up, Jay? Hey, hey, hey! Happy Thursday, everybody. Your Thursday, our Friday. Let's get this going. Let's get it going. Um, if you wh wherever you are right now, make sure that you're sharing the show. Um, <laughs> this is. We usually say this before the show. We might miss it ever so often, but you know, we're not real experts, but uh, we are not novices either. We have been in the political game for a long time. We have very strong opinions about what's going on. It doesn't mesh with the mainstream media, and it shouldn't because the mainstream media has an agenda, uh, a liberal, communist-type, socialist agenda. Uh now, but that doesn't say that our side doesn't have an agenda too. So that's why we spend our time in calling out both sides. We the without prejudice. We call out both sides without prejudice. Now we all we, we don't agree on everything. That's why there's a it's a panel. We can talk about it. We can talk about it and and uh we can throw our uh, our, our research out there and uh you know. Sometimes I might have to turn off the alligator show and check to see what Hut said, or I might have to turn off the crocodile show and see what JR said. So, I mean, that's that's just how it is. But that's America too. So let's let's get into this really quick. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but Jamal Bauman was just censured by the House. Um, uh, so many people on uh, social media is like, "Well, he sh he should be expelled." I'm like. For me, I'm like, listen, listen, he pulled the fire alarm, okay? If I'm all for shutting down the government, if you want to shut down the government, because I, I, I ain't saving nobody. I ain't saving nobody up there. And if y'all ain't about that, then whatever. But y'all were calling for censure. That's what you were calling for. You were calling, he, he needs to be censured. He needs to be censured. Now y'all saying expel him for pulling the fire alarm. I I mean I I don't understand. 
Seriously, I don't. And it's like, there's, what is it called? Blood? Um, lust? Blood. That's what it is. It's blood lust, man. And it it's like, oh, okay, fine, fine. You know what? Great. Expel him, expel him for pulling the fire alarm. Now, if somebody on our side do something stupid and they expel them for something stupid, what are you going to say now? Oh, well, I, 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 I don't get it. I get it, but I don't get it. But my solution is shut down the whole goddamn thing. I don't think that Jamal ought to be the one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? For me. I think the person that ought to be expelled is the judge. I mean, this shouldn't be dealt with in Congress. I think a lot of people are angry because it's the same exact charge that the January Sixers are being held on, obstructing the official government thumb. That's what they said he did when he pulled that along when they were trying to have a vote on the debt ceiling. I, I think that Congress needs to get back to legislating. I've been saying that, too. I've been saying that too. Because all it is is a show. It's not. It's never. Nothing's going to happen because of any of this stuff. They don't have the power. So why are we waste? Is it too loud or? It sounds um, kind of echoey. All right, I'll be. No, I, I got to oh, find out. You go. You're um. You're you're peeking. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know what's going on here. Right. Yeah. Much went through puberty overnight. His voice got deeper and kind of scratchy. Yeah. We have to all right, I don't know. I'll be right back. No, wait, wait. Nope, that was good. That yeah. was good? All right. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I don't like this, man. When my audio starts going. That's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's true. You look, you. <laughs> A- ask Silverhair. Gone down because their audio wasn't straight. But no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, ask but Bill then, the Uniter. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but then some guy, some got rich at $20,000 a month off of that, too. Um, yeah, and look, I've been saying the same thing. They don't want to legislate. And they're picking and choosing little, little picky, picky, diggy things to talk about or to bring up, but they aren't legislating. They are, they are not legislating in D.C. They're not doing their jobs. That's why I say shut down the whole thing, Jay. Well, it's funny. Today, if you follow the House of Representatives, they censured Jamal Bowman, which, fine, great. He deserved to be censured. He did something he shouldn't have. Hutch hit the nail on the head. He should have the same crimes the January 6th people did. Because if you look at the January 6th folks, they the, the crime they were punished for was obstructing a congressional process or whatever the term is. And yeah, so, you know, Jamal Bowman should be treated to that. And then the other thing that they legislated today is they passed a bill to stop the Joe Biden student loan forgiveness, which he just put something else through and they're bragging about it. They're already sending fundraising emails. We're not going to make you pay for that. Well, that bill's going to go nowhere. So congratulations, everybody who gets your fundraising or sees it on Twitter. It's it's ridiculous. Let's let's get the budgets done or something we can actually do something with. And I take it the other way. I would say let's not prosecute Jamal Bowman the same way as we do the J6ers. Let's all let all the J6ers right. out and who cares about Jamal Bowman? Right. Yeah, just treat them the same. Whatever <laughs> yeah. whatever you decide the punishment is for that crime, let's just I always do that with everybody. Whenever there's a decision between more laws or less laws. I always go with less laws. Right. Yep. More punishment or less punishment. Let's go with less. Right. Right. The government's out here running this with the barrel of a gun, and I hate that. Yeah. Well, and I'd be I, I, okay I, with whatever they do as long as it's consistent. I mean, yeah. you can't lock up J6 or for two and a half years without a trial. Meanwhile, Jamal Bowman spends 12 minutes getting his paperwork done, and that's it. I mean, you either have laws or you don't. And again, I would go for the let's not lock anybody up as right. opposed to lock everybody up. Right. My thing is just that, uh, I mean, if if that's if that's what it, I mean, well, then a whole lot of people on social media should grow up and accept what y'all just said. Uh, because right now, the, the blood lust isn't helping anything. No. Uh, 
And you know, that's that's what I'm seeing. And I'm like, <laughs> look who you have in Congress, and y'all want more. Look who we have on our side, and y'all want them to do. They aren't going to do it. They, the people that we have in there right now, they're not going to do it. I know? think we should just go back to when Congress just had duels. Like there Why was not? a time where the Congress said, let's just go settle this, and they just had a yeah. duel. I, yeah. I think that's okay. Shabbat will have finished. Uh, uh, Congress people... Congress people, Congress lawmakers, if they've been in long enough or they've played the political game, played the political game long enough, they know how to wordsmith, and they and they know how to word um, do word semantics. Um, I don't know if some of you have heard the word think tank, policy policy think tank, or group think tanks and whatnot, but they do studies on what words to use. For simple Americans, uh, for stupid Americans, and I, I believe me, I, it hurts me to say those words, but that's what Congress thinks of you. That's why they come up with these words uh, to pull on your heartstring, pull on your heartstrings, and to tug at you. So, when when people start talking about the border, about the southern border, that hits real home with us. Am, am I right? Southern right. border, we have to protect our southern border. Israel is in trouble, though. When I hear a congressperson say, I don't want to hear about Israel right now. I just want to focus on our southern border. I, I don't know. That, that hits me a certain way. Because I think that there's a way, I mean, the Congress, they should be able to take care of the border, I mean, the border, period. But if you do have an ally, you do work closely with your ally. Now, I'm not saying give them money, but you do work closely with that ally to bring whatever that they're going through to an end, or or you help or you help them bring it to an end um, politically, if need be. When I hear when I hear a congressperson say that they're tired of seeing Israel in the news and stuff like that, they're just worried about our border. I'm like, hmm. I see what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. But who are you talking to? Okay, who are you talking to? Are you talking to uh, the pro pet? I because that's the view of the pro Palestinian people they don't want to hear israel in the in the news they don't want us to defend israel they don't want us to do anything with israel they want us to cut ties basically and stuff like that if we have people on our side sort of saying the same thing but not in that way we do you know it's like wow massey That's, comes to mind massey, right massey massey is coming out saying and I think I was pointing more toward MTG. MTG just came out and said that. So, um, and yesterday she was talking about, I hope no, I hope nobody dies because uh, McCarthy leaves and stuff like that. I, 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 again, the reason why I am the way I am with Congress today, with the lawmakers, is because of everything that we've gone through in the past 12 years. That's why. That's why I am this way, jaded, whatever, scorn. What that? That's just the way I am. That's why I don't care about anybody up there. I don't praise anybody. Well, no, I'm, I don't worship anybody up there. Congress is not a place where right now, Congress is not a place where I want any of my kids to go. I don't, right now, but I do think that there is a way that we can fix it. Because we talked about it yesterday, um, and I also put a, um, um, uh, Jay Jay uh, put out that uh, video early this morning. I did, I, yeah, I was up early this morning, but I put out that video detailing exactly how what what we need to do for the primary. But 
what we need to do to change Congress. Is and I'm, honestly, Hutch, it's really not that hard. It's not that hard. Mm. It's not that hard. It's just that we've said people don't want to sacrifice. If you do it within the rule book with no violence or anything like that, you got to do it one representative at a time. In, in a free election type country, I don't want to call this a democracy, uh, but in our type of republic, republic, that's the only way you do it. You got to change people's minds. I mean, one of the things that's imperative is that we get the integrity issue back because that's what get that's what deflates me is like we can have all the votes we want and that's not the issue right you know and that's sad see i i think the bigger issue personally it, it's kind of like we talk about securing the border and mm -hmm. i think the root cause is that we need to do deportations it's not just stopping the people from coming in but it's sending the people that are here home absolutely and and I think when you talk about government, if we can only accomplish one thing, and that would shrink the size of the federal government by about 70%, that would be a game changer in America. And that is within the legislative purview of the president of the United States. They have avenues to do that. And I hope if President Trump gets in there, just like Hutch keeps saying, you know, pick the even numbers, pick the odd numbers on your Social Security card. And I want to adjust that a little bit because really – there's so many people that work for this behemoth and many, many of them are great, good American patriots. You have to do it by attrition. The way you shrink the federal government is you don't hire anybody else. Right. You let people retire. You give them initiatives for early retirement and you clear the deck that way. That way nobody gets slapped in the face that, for something that wasn't their fault. You know, and, and that way you can do it a little bit more civilly. I mean, I'd love to just throw the switch and be done with it. But think about those millions of people. What are they going to do with their mortgage? I, I hate to respectfully disagree, but I've worked in the private sector. We are bankrupt as a company. We are $34 trillion in debt. We are paying a trillion dollars a year on interest. If this were a business, you'd shut down that location. You would shut down that industry. And that sucks. But that's I, I yield to the gentleman in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I mean, we want to be empathetic and I don't want people to be out of work. I've, I, I don't know about you guys, but I've been part of downsizing. I've been well, with uh, companies that fail. I tell you, and, I've been part of it like three or four times. Yeah. And what happens? You just lost find my job. Another job. You know, we've yeah. been hearing about the unemployment rate so low and how great the Over Joe here. Biden economy is. And everywhere I go, there's help wanted signs. And I mean, you, you bought the ticket, you took the ride to work for the federal government. If we're going through a phase that the federal government is going to shrink, it's just like if I'm working for a company and I see our company going out of business and struggling financially, I'm, I'm a fool if I sit there and go, oh, I'm just going to ride this out or I'm going to accept those consequences. So, and I don't want to be cold, but that's... No, you're right. But let me just throw a little bit of reality out there, like you just said. Uh, I worked for the federal government. I never started out to work for the federal government. That was right. never, never my plan. I joined the United States Army and I got trained as a tank mechanic. And when I got done with the United States Army, they still have tanks that need to be fixed in the reserves. So I went and did the, what I knew how to do. And it ended up being the federal government because there's not a whole lot of civilian entities that fix tanks. Right. You know, so, I mean, there, there are some specialized areas. Um, that need to be preserved, and that's one of them. But I, on the whole, I agree with you. We we can't we can't afford it anymore. It's and not only can we not afford it, but it's part of the deep state, a right. huge part of the deep state. Yeah, I mean, when you see an NFL team that's run poorly and they bring in a new coach, the coach got to fire everybody down to the trainer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to have yeah. a huge player turnover. You have to do that, and the fact. These numbers are just boggling. We're going to collect $4 trillion in taxes. One trillion of that is going to be paying interest. Imagine if 25% of your income went to interest on a loan or on your credit card. You would be, you would be, you'd be selling furniture. You, you'd be doing anything you could in your, in your own. I mean, and we've all gone through difficult financial times. That's what you do. And as soon as we aren't the reserve currency, we're going to have to make that choice. We won't have an option.
You know, um, real quick, um, do I have do I have the? Uh, we were talking about um, cars. Yeah, there we go. We were talking about um, electric cars toward toward the end of the show golf yesterday. Cart, baby, we love the golf carts. Yeah, I want you to. I want you to listen to this. Electric car is not. To save the world from climate change, it's to impose control. It, it will decide where you can and cannot go. Because right. where they don't want you to go, it will not take you. Mm. The computer will not drive the car there. That's the idea. And the technology for that is simple. They've got it on golf carts now. You know, where they don't want you to drive in a golf cart, it will stop. You have to reverse. It. I know it sounds well, simplified. No, no, no it's it, not simplified. It's, it's, it's actually a wonderful example mm. of what the plan is. True story. Bigger than yeah. that, though. It's a bigger than that, the plan. Well, it's already going to be in gas cars, too, so it's not like it's just electric. 2026, Massey did expose that. Built into the deal, they got kill switches on your cars. And they all voted for it. Right. Yeah. And Massey has a has a electric car. Too. He has a golf cart. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Massey. Um, What's wrong with that guy? I don't know. It's a little queerish to me. I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, See, the, the thing about these people, you know, people inside their head, including myself, you got the good guys and the bad guys and the, in the middle guys, right? Mm -hmm. But just always remember this. Everything that we talk about, all the bad things that Congress does, every last one of them knows about it. Every single one of them knows about the Uniparty knows about the J6 people. They all know everything. They know about Epstein Island. They know about the FBI. All 500 of them. Mm -hmm. Nobody's doing anything. Well, yeah, I mean, that's covered in orientation. 25,000 <laughs> know, immigrants yesterday. <laughs> well, How many? welcome to... Yeah, yeah, I heard about... Yeah, that's right. 25,000 at one time. Yep. Yeah. Through one checkpoint. That's not right, man. I'm, I'm serious. That's not right. It's going to be. It's going to be the death of us. Yeah. yeah. See, this and is going to be interesting how it shakes out because back with Al Gore in about 30, 40, however many years ago, they really started pushing climate change as an existential threat. And frankly, we're in nowhere shape today in climate, in my opinion. You know, take any metric. And, and at the same time, conservatives started talking about the debt and federal spending. We started talking about borders and immigration. One of those two sides is going to be proven very, very right. And one of those two sides is going to be proven very, very wrong. Something and else that's the same th along those same lines is this Hamas Israel war is going to destroy the Democrat Party. Right. That's going to drive a wedge, right? That's going to cut it in half. It's going to cut it in half because half of them are pro Israel. And, and that's the thing. That gets me again. I, I came up in Pittsburgh, right? A lot of Jewish people here. And one of the things that was sacred that would no Democrat would ever say anything about Israel. That was I off know. the table. Yeah, you're right. That you're was right. never they Democrats were their constituency. They all almost in lockstep. The Jews voted for the Democrats. Uh and now it's like Summer Lee, man, Pittsburgh's pride and joy. My God, are you a Nazi? It's going to destroy them, and I can't wait to watch it. I just hope that the Nazis don't win. Right. Yeah, yeah it, it's going to be whoever wins this battle. The other, I mean, and we talk about that with history. We, Whoever wins the battle gets to write the history books, you know. Speak, speaking about battle, I asked you a question about uh, whether, whether the presidential job was – bigger today than was too much for one man. Now I heard, um, I'm going to play you something. And, uh, you know, we took care of that yesterday. Great, great responses, by the way, but I want you to listen to what I heard yesterday. And then I want to hear you. I'm going to say something which will make me sound like a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist, but look it up. The federal reserve is not federal. We knew that. Federal Reserve has shareholders. It is not a federal organization. 
the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. The shareholders of it are the banks themselves. It's as federal as Federal Express. <laughs> Bingo. Mm. So here you have a regulatory body controlled by the entities that it is regulating. The systems are too big, right? Everyone's always like, oh, Biden, oh, Trump. Well, the problem's not the president. The problem is the presidency itself, the seat. When the Constitution was drafted and the seat of the American president was formed, human beings had never traveled faster than a horse could carry them. The country was tiny. There was no such thing as telecommunication. So today, almost 250 years later, we expect to be able to elect one person who's so talented that they can run, they can educate all of our children. <laughs> and they can manage the nation's economy. And they can be the military leader of the planet. And they can... <laughs> that person doesn't exist. There is no one human being that's going to come in here and magically wait. The systems are too big. Mm. We've got to rethink it. We've got to... Pa- I that's, think... That's dangerous talk right there. It is. It is dangerous talk. But then when I see what happened to President Trump, President Trump went in there like, man, I'm going to clean that swamp. I'm going to take down this thing. So he got in there. And I think we all can agree it was bigger than what he thought it was. I think the betrayal was bigger. I mean, if if, every, if everybody would have played the game according to what uniform they were wearing, it would have been different. But everybody went against him to protect the machine. To protect what, the machine, exactly. What happened was, and, and this happened over 50 years, it took a long time for this to happen. Mm-hmm. The United States Congress ceded their power to the executive. One thing after another. This stuff is not supposed to all fall on the president. And the other thing, the other point I'll make is what he talked about the Fed. That's every single government agency. Yeah. The drug manufacturers control the FDA. The school boards and unions control the Department of Education. The green people fuel the Department of Energy. That's that's what our whole government is. That's why the agencies have to be killed. We were talking Federalist Papers yesterday, and a common theme from all of the writers of the Federalist Papers and the framers of the Constitution was government needs to be small, ineffective, and the only time they take action is where there's wide agreement. And as soon as we made it about money and power, power corrupts, money corrupts, and that's when that's when things went sideways. And, I mean, if, if we're going to take that clip, like, I can't talk Federal Reserve without going tinfoil hat, the uh, the Fed is awful. And, I mean, if you guys are looking for something this weekend or tomorrow when the Wayne Dupree show is not on, Google the Federal Reserve. See how it was created. See what its purpose is. See what it does. It even prints money without having to print money. People don't even know that. You Jason, put, 100... put, put the hat back on for a second. We're going. We're going hat. When you Google it, Google Federal Reserve space Titanic. Okay. Right. I love that story. <laughs> and some of this stuff you can't make up because uh-uh. you take the Federal Reserve and you hear and it's funny because we're living in a time where every conspiracy theory is being proven true, right, Hutch? Everyone. And, and and the people that oppose the Federal Reserve got they shot it down the legislation because they thought it would give way too much power to the bankers. And the bankers would essentially, they own the government right now. The government owes the Federal Reserve all this money. And and it's funny, every time we go to send money somewhere, we borrow it from the Federal Reserve, who sells bonds to China, acts as a middleman, and then and then we send it to Ukraine or wherever we're going to go. So, yeah, Federal Reserve, it's a... But all those folks that opposed it, they went for a boat ride on the Titanic. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, they did. Um, problem solved. Problem solved. Yeah. Legislation passed the next year. The, re- the reason why the reason why I played that is because I wanted to, because in listening to it, I was like, hmm, I wonder, I wonder what the guys would say about that because I, I already knew about the Federal Reserve. That was something when Congress wasn't even in session. Congress didn't have nothing to do with that one. It was signed by the president in the United States while Congress, well, Congress was out of session. It was signed after Christmas. 
when they went home for Christmas, it was signed and was never taken away. And I just talked about Congress has given away their powers for some odd reason. And I'm surprised that the Republicans haven't put it on the table to get their powers back right now. But um, since they're in charge, but um, they gave their powers away during 9-11. I mean, legitimately, they signed over their powers to the President of the United States. Something that um, something that George Washington, <laughs> you said something the other day, um, that uh, if, if um, Washington, Adams, and Jefferson knew what this government was doing, they would light them up. <laughs> they knew it was going to happen. I mean, they wrote about that. You, If you look at yeah. what Jason was talking about, the Federalist Papers, make yeah. sure you also read the Anti-Federalist Papers because right. there's two sides of the argument. Um, but but these, uh, if you look at the Constitution, you could, this is why I kind of disagree with the audio clip you played right. because right. I, because I feel that our Constitution is timeless. Perfect. Yeah, you have to make adjustments to speed and technology, and yeah, you have to. Our entire country's history, we've changed. We used to walk, then we rode horses. Right. Then there was a big battle when the trains came in. Then there was another huge battle when the cars came in. It's what mm -hmm. happens. Well, and if you read the Constitution and and really study it, two thirds of what the government does are not powers enumerated. To them in the constitution it's quite the opposite you know they they take a concept like we're going to control interstate commerce or or legislate interstate commerce or be the arbiter if two states had an issue with interstate commerce and suddenly you get a nationwide regulatory agency that has so much power and i mean that's just how the ball starts rolling and keeps rolling no i agree and you look at the Federal Reserve, you look at what happened after the Federal Reserve. Uh, you said, uh, Wayne, that he just signed off on it. Richard Nixon did the same thing. Took us off the gold standard on a Saturday night. And that was so they could pay for the Great Society and the Vietnam War at the same time without raising taxes or anything. Yep. So he took us off the gold standard, and that's why we're in trillions of dollars of debt right now. Yep. Well, and it's fascinating too if if when everything's revealed it's determined that the bankers and are the big baddie you know because if you're living in a movie you've got who's the big bad who's really behind it all i think it's more than plausible to think the banking industry is is the problem i mean they own everybody you know um i gotta we're we're gonna get ready to talk about the debate in just a second but um I'm just remembering some of the stuff that we talked about earlier in the week and in, in pulling up these clips, I'm like, yeah, this is, I can, I think, I think I can get a, I think I can get a little conversation with the boys out of this. Let me, um, let me introduce this because Jay was talking about the taxes and stuff uh, yesterday. Well, uh, day before yesterday. And um, you know, that, really hit home especially with what our um what the founders of this country would say about it so when i heard this this clip that i'm getting ready to play it, this hit this also hit home too let me imagine this. if today somebody gave you a check for a million dollars and you went to deposit it in the bank and the bank said great this will clear in the next 10 business days because it's a big check and the bank has to work it out so now for this following business days, you'd be walking around with this high energy outputting into the universe of you feeling wealthy and abundant and happy and excited and satisfied. And as a result, living from that level of energy would produce all these other experiences that are on that level of excitement and abundance and prosperity. Even though you don't have a dollar to spend yet, you'd just be walking around all that time knowing that you're going to get that $1 million check. But nothing really changed. It's just that you gave permission to a condition to allow yourself to feel an emotion. So now I want you to go deep within yourself and manifest whatever goal, condition, or feeling you want to be reality. And it once will, you just need to give yourself permission to accept what is meant for you. 
drop a 100 below. So here's the deal. You know, you know how I say I hate money. There it is. First of all, I really don't let money rule or make me happy or, or sad. Now, I do hate money, but it doesn't make me happy or sad. I just live. That's it. I just live. In a couple of days, I'm going to be a double nickel. I'm going to be 55. The, the way that I think about things going on right now in this country and also former classmates seeing young people just just dropping dead underneath my age bracket seeing people dying in my age bracket oh that gets better you know what i'm saying it's <laughs> like Everybody I ever knew is dead except for you two guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, that. That's just. It's weird, you know. And you know what, like, the, what the weirdest part is when you're the because most people's families you had somebody to look up to, right? Right. All, all our life. Yeah. It sucks being that guy. Right. I'm that guy. I, I bet. I bet. You know, like. Um, like my dad, I, I was adopted. Uh, so when I look at my dad's bloodline, and just you know, we were talking about Rome and uh, mm -hmm. everything. When he died, his whole bloodline ended. ended. Think about that. That's why my grandson is named Hutch Bailey the Fourth. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna because, rule. Hey, we just call him Four. Yeah, see, that's nice. He's gonna rule the kingdom someday. You're yeah, all little, uh, when yeah, you build right. that compound out in the woods. In <laughs> yep. It says fiefdom. We'll be we'll be heading up there so we can be. I remember saved your great days. grandfather, <laughs> yeah, Bailey Junior. I remember <laughs> him, boy. Yeah, he was he was something, and 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 and, and then he had that radio show. <laughs> and, and then he was in the woods. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He. <laughs> He led the attack on the Alleghenies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and don't you guys, when you're young, <laughs> Martin Luther King was talking about him. Right. <laughs> well, and think of it when you were young and huh? you were young and you were climbing and you were doing all this stuff. Now it's like your aspiration is I want to be the guy in the woods. I want to be the guy. Right, with the right. Uh, I'll, right. I'll quote, I'll quote uh, the late, Mob boss John Gotti. All I want out of life is a good sandwich. Right. There we go. There we go. That's right. You know, well, yeah. What you know what? If 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 today was your last day, what would be your last meal? Boy, that's a tough one. Maybe <laughs> maybe lobster tail. Really? See, I could see crab. I'm more of a crab guy than a lobster. Maybe lobby. both. Yeah, maybe both. Lobster tail and crab? Yeah. So Extra for me, it'd be a big old slab of prime rib. Who am I kidding? With a bowl of Extra. butter? Oh, oh, yeah. Extra horse crab. <laughs> <laughs> clarified <laughs> butter. <laughs> clarified. Mm. Hey, if y'all don't know about that clarified butter, boy, look, get rid of get rid of that other butter and get that clarified butter. All What's right, clarified, that clarified butter. butter, huh? You take you take all the milk fat out, oh. so it's it, it's clear. It's clear. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. That's well, what you get in a restaurant? Huh. Yeah, they do it for steaks and lobster. Woo! Woo! Man, that clarified butter. I used to watch it on YouTube. Those uh, see. I don't I don't cook hood. I cook chef because of the people that I watch online. So I remember um I remember years ago my ex-wife and the kids would look at the food that I was cooking and they're like, "Man, we eat better than regular people on a regular night." Because that's that's how I learned to cook. You know, I just cooked the cook food. Chris, yeah, Chris, Christy, Chris. Okay, so <laughs> this, 
let's get to the debate. Um, I didn't really watch it. No, actually, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. Um, I saw some of the clips online. Um, well, Vivek wasn't playing. No, he wasn't. And I wonder if he's doing it to the detriment of his own campaign from what I saw the clips. I don't really care. I think he's doing a great job. I don't care if I never see him again. He's putting holes in all those idiots. <laughs> well, that's the way seems, I look at it. To, to me, it seems like he let um, DeSantis off the hook. I think DeSantis is irrelevant. See, yeah, well, I think maybe not. Say, my wife loves me. And I got I got to watch the whole debate while we were at <coughs> Sorry to hear that in the living room. <laughs> Which part that she loves me or that I got to watch the debate? <laughs> the debates. <laughs> I got to say that debate was awesome to watch, and you know the big thing was I really connected with Ron DeSantis in a way I never connected with him I before. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we we have we have some things in common. For example, neither of us will ever be president of the United States. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, Ron, you and I, we're bros. Neither one of us will be. The some of the faces people. like you posted, some of those faces, man. I know. Oh. But, but but can you give us a report on Megyn Kelly? Uh, May, I will say, if you're going to watch the debate, go back and watch the first 10 minutes. Right. Megyn Kelly, remember when she asked those kind of shitty questions, President Trump? Yeah, she did that down the entire line. Yeah. She had, like she started out with Ron DeSantis. She's like, "So, Ron, coming into this, you were super popular, and you've spent more money than most presidential campaigns have even spent, and you're down by thirty points." Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you're seeing his face, seeing his face when he, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why when, when I took that picture of Ron doing these faces, that was when she was slamming him. And then Chris Christie, it was the same. Something similar where she's and I gotta say, Chris Christie, he didn't talk much. They kept going like in the there was three segments in the middle segment. I don't think he said a word, but I love Chris Christie because you know that guy who's like older and knows he's either getting ready to retire or get fired, and he just could give two shits. And you know, he's at your work and it's like Chris Christie's up there, he's just leaning on the podium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, I know my you can always tell the loser, you can always tell the losers too. Because the first right. thing they say about 20, 25 minutes into the debate is, why'd you take so long to call on me? Right. I mean, that's what they always do. Now, losers, nobody wants to hear what you have to say, Chris. And, well, yeah. Chris Christie was awesome, too, because sometimes yeah. they'd ask Ron DeSantis a question, and Ron would, you would see it click oh in his head, I need to give this speech. Wait a minute. And so he'd yeah. give this speech, yeah. and then Chris would go, Ron, we're sick of this. Yeah, Ron, yeah. Would answer yeah. the question. They asked you a yes or no question. <laughs> yep. You yep. gave this speech yep. that didn't answer the question. It's a yes or no question. What Just answer fit? the question, Ron. I'll Why tell you, you answer the question. The clip I saw that was the best to me, and I didn't watch the whole thing, so you could probably find ones that are better. But oh yeah, I saw one where Vivek was talking about Ukraine. Oh my and god, he made he made Nikki Haley look like an idiot. Right, she had the face of the year. When, she, when he told her, you don't even know the names of the provinces that we want to occupy in Ukraine. I was like, damn, she doesn't. Look, look at her. She doesn't know them. I it, mean, wow. It's worse but because look, two minutes later, she goes to butt in and goes to name them and she gives the wrong provinces. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said, well, the Crimean Peninsula and then this and that. And he's like, yeah, that's wrong. Don't next. <laughs> Bakhmut, right? Let me. Yeah, um, was, uh, yeah, Nikki Haley got ended in several several different clips. Yeah, that's what I read. Yeah, Vivek. Overall, in the debate, like the crowd hated Vivek, but everybody online, everybody watching it, loved it. But I think that crowd was full of all the donors. Well, think I about it. Think people. about it. Who would go to that? Right. None of us. No. Well, you might for the entertainment value, but <laughs> oh, I loved it. For me, um, I don't, I don't think, I'm serious. I, I don't think that Nikki Haley is done. No, and no, she, she, got, she got five hundred thousand dollars two days ago. She ain't done. Yeah, she, she even talked um, about that. They said Megan asked her a question about all the big money donors, and Vivek laid her out. You were broke, and then you went into the private sector. Now you're worth eight million dollars, and and then Megan Kelly tried. 
went down that same path. You got all the big money donors and, and Nikki just goes, yeah, I took all the money. You guys would all take all the money too. If, uh, no, you know, but no, oh, they're not. Sanders didn't say anything about it. Did he? Nope. I want to, here's that, um, Christy, for how this government oh, handled listen. Here's COVID-19. What, here's, here's, what, what here's, here's what you're going to have to do. Now, Chris, you had your chance to wax yeah, eloquent on Donald yeah, Trump. You've been doing it all this whole race. Why doesn't he just answer the question? The question was very direct. Is he fit to be president or isn't he? The rest of the speech is interesting, but completely non-responsive. And if we were in a courtroom, they'd strike the answer and say, Governor DeSantis. No, they you're would. Smart, they would say that. You're a smart they would man. Argue that the, no, they would. No, they wouldn't. They would Chris. strike the answer no, they because you're not answering you it. Just is he don't fit? Like, you, is have he your, fit? Your, you have no. your thing. Is he you fit or isn't he? Thing. No, I don't have my thing. We don't. He's the thing. Is we he do fit or isn't he? To do you're talking that's about him being 80, 80 years old. It doesn't mean Ron, that somebody is he couldn't fit? get elected. That's not the people that are. Governor DeSantis, let him Ron, is he fit or isn't he? Governor DeSantis, let Ron, is he fit? I think we have an opportunity to do somebody who is in the primary. Right. Yes. We don't have to no worry about right. all this I'm stuff with Ron. We can hey, get God, it done, and we'll do it. I'm going to come to you. Finish. Can Look, we cut the mic? Father time is undefeated. I don't know how he would score on a, on a test, but I know this. We have an opportunity to nominate someone and elect someone for two terms who's going to be spitting nails on day one and for eight years so deliver you, you big fits. result. You we should think. not nominate somebody he won't who's, answer. Who's, who's, who's almost 80 years old. Okay. He's afraid to answer. <laughs> no, I'm not. He's, no, you have to no. either, either you're afraid or you're not listening. No, it's not. There's a simple you don't, you don't question. Want to hear the is he fit? Is he fit? No, no, they can hear this. No one can hear you. They can't hear you. You finish and then you get it back. All right. You know, look, I'm a simple guy. Okay. okay, I hear the question and I answer it. Is he fit or isn't he? I'll concede you're fit, Ron. You're a new generation. You're 44 <laughs> years old. I wish I was still 44 years old. Okay? 45. So, well, congratulations. I'd still take 45. Is he fit or isn't he? And this is the problem with my three colleagues. They're afraid to offend. And See, let I me wanna, tell you I wanna, something. I if you're afraid, on, if you're afraid to <laughs> offend Donald Trump, then what are you going to do when you sit across from President Xi, you sit across from the Ayatollah, you sit across from Putin? You have to be willing to offend with the truth okay. and answer the question. Fit or unfit? Okay, listen, 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 listen. I promise, Ron DeSantis, okay. a minute and it, not and a full minute. I've got a second. It's not about offending. It's about. It's embarrassing. Oh, the, the Israel section was just as bad. They asked, because they have hostages, would you send in our military to extract the hostages? And everybody's giving these speeches, and it gets a Chris Christie, and he goes, he goes, it's really simple. Yes, I would give us special forces. I would send them in. We'd extract our American citizens. We'd be done. Not a single person on here will answer the question. And then it goes to Ron, and he's like, let me talk to you about the Israel Palestine. <laughs> and then Chris, Chris goes, Ron, you didn't answer the question again. Could you answer the question? Rule number one, if you're going to go and get into a shouting match with somebody else, make sure your voice is louder than his. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ron, you're never going to win like that. You look like an idiot. And Chris plus, Christie handed it to you. And plus, another thing about being in an argument, and I've been in many with my ex-wives, is when you do respond, respond with some substance. If you're repeating the same thing over and over in the argument response, you're just trying to shut the other person up. You don't. Have, you don't really have nothing to say. It, what it reminds me of is Steve Bannon trying to interrupt one of his people. I mean, it's like, dude, I had to listen to that for 15 seconds. <laughs> oh, and then Vivek, he had this great moment, too, because he was talking about Nikki Haley. And then he lifts up his notebook, and it says, Nikki is corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> she is, too. I mean, yeah. she, wants to, she wants to bomb everybody. And Although I will say this. I think, Christy, if I had to guess... He got because he defended Nikki Haley and the person yeah. who makes the tax against her. And I think the big money people got to Christie and said, Okay, go after DeSantis. Let's take him out. And <laughs> Vivek, nobody everybody knows Vivek won't be president. And I then I think 
I bet you he gets more votes than any of the rest of them. Well, I think they're trying to coalesce behind Nikki Haley. That was kind of well, yeah, impression. yeah. I don't know if the money went to Christie. Christie just don't like Rivet. He just don't or like Trump him. or Trump or us. Yeah. And what I saw, and I and and I know y'all mentioned Hillary Clinton and uh, Nikki, but um, when Hillary Clinton was running for office in New York. There was a after, guy after John F. Kennedy was killed in an airplane crash. Right. There was a guy that she was running against who was already basically probably going to win. John F. Kennedy Jr. No, no. He was dead. There was another laugh, Laszlo, laugh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But if Kennedy wasn't dead, he'd have won that seat. Right. But when he died, there was another guy that came so up weird. that looked like he was going to win. And right. then that's when she went up there and her poll numbers start going up. So when they had a debate, she's on one side of the stage and he's on one side of the stage and he pulls out the facts and stuff because they're going at it yelling and he leaves the podium and walks over to her. I remember that with the thing because they made he, a big deal about it about the, they made a big deal about yeah. it like he was intimidating I her forgot about or, that. okay so when he was doing that to nikki haley last night for many people online bloodlust um they saw it as yeah get her get her get her get her i was like oh man okay all right uh, believe me i'm not voting for nikki haley i think i've I said some things in the past that people need to worry about Nikki Haley. And I'm seeing some stuff I wouldn't vote for. But if you go full bore on her like that, she's going to get some sympathy. Like Hillary Clinton got sympathy. And if you look at Nikki Haley and her campaign and her past, she is eerily similar to Hillary Clinton. That's why... That's why I brought that up about one of her heroes, by the way. Yeah. Oh, and she breaks out the I'm a woman or I'm Indian or whatever she is. Whenever notice, (laughs) notice she stood there. She stood there while he was her down. She didn't, she didn't come back. She didn't get rattled. She didn't fuss with him. She made herself look small as being attacked, you know? And for me, most of the clips that I saw, um, Vivek was going after Nikki. I was like, how about Ron? Oh, he went after like, Ron a fair bit. Not too. that much. Not, not that as much. much as Nikki, but. Yeah, not that much. I was like, Ron is the one, you know, uh, okay. Because he was just standing there, uh, another Ted Cruz uh, following the wave He's with both his hands up like. Superman just looking and surviving. So many people were like, yeah, the sand is one last name. I'm like, oh man, here we go. Here we go. I will say they have improved Ron DeSantis' speech giving skills. He still is the most awkward human I've ever seen on a political he stage. He is awkward. He, he is, is stand awkward. there, he makes these weird faces and has these weird hand gestures. And it's kind of, we talked about Nixon in the in the Nixon Kennedy debate, how Nixon was all sweaty and looked awful. Anybody watching Ron DeSantis speak, but you can tell when it clicks and he starts giving his little speech that he practiced 10,000 times. Exactly. And he, and and he that, talks about when I was on the camp train trail, I saw Bob Smith and. Oh, Hill I hate Hampshire. that. I hate that. I hate too, that. That is my worst. As soon as you say that, I just think you're an idiot. If it can't be fact checked, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> right? right. You talk to Su- Susie Mondominer in Potoka. Uh, oh. Oka County, and she told st- you all whatever. At the State of the Union address, I mean, welcome, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Festus is out there. He's a transgender Cro Magnon police officer in the postal department, and he yeah. agrees with me a hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, stop it, man. And we yeah. do it too. Trump does it too. I hate that. I hate it. Yeah. I hate I, when yeah, all yeah, politicians do it. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, no, I got to say though, of all the debates, because I sat through all of them, and I think this is the last one before the primary. I. If I would say watch one, last night's was fun. It was great. And they were just all wailing at each other. Christy knows he's done. He's just waiting to drop out. 
And then uh, I, I think Nikki and Ron Vivek almost felt like he was auditioning to be VP. He certainly won the sound bites of the night. So yeah, it was uh, it was pretty it was pretty spectacular. But I, I think what'll probably happen is if MAGA gets out in votes, Trump wins Iowa, the money leaves DeSantis if he loses bad enough. Everybody coalesces under Nikki Haley and the establishment. She's the candidate that they try to push through because they're saying if she's got 10 and Ron's got 10 and Christie's got five, if we take that 25 and put it together, can we do something with that? And I, and I think that's where, I think that's where they'll go with it. Well, CNN is doing um, two town halls next week. I'm surprised they aren't doing um, Nikki Haley, but they're doing Ron DeSantis and um, Vivek both in Iowa. See what happens. Ron is next Tuesday and Vivek is next Wednesday. Um, they will ask Vivek about his conspiracy theories about 9 11. And uh, oh my God, that was a great clip. Yeah. And and they're going to make, they're going to go after him about that. Believe me, they're going to go after, they don't want to know anything else. They just want to cut him down to size on that. And he will get up there and say, well, that's not what I said. Uh, <laughs> Christy was like, every time you come up here, you say something and we quote you. And then, no, 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 no. He said, you're out there on the campaign trail, you say something. And then when you get to the debate, we quote you. And then you say you didn't say it. You, you've you been doing it for a long time and you're still doing it. It's, it's, yeah, okay. I got to say a lot of that, though, is just taking stuff out of context. To, to give an example. No, no, the they read it word for word, though. No, no, no. Hear me mm -hmm. out, Wayne. So, okay. like, the headline today will be Chris Christie came out against or, or supporting transgender surgery for kids. And they'll, they'll take a sentence that he used. Chris Christie actually gave a pretty good answer. And he said, you know, I really struggle with this because anytime we give government more power, it ends up biting us in the ass. And this whole legislative thing, you know, I, I he says, I don't want to give federal government power. I've learned from that uh, with Vivek. They do the same thing. It's the same thing that the media does with President Trump, where he said he'll be a dictator on day one. That's not what Trump said. Did he say those few words? Yeah. But there was much more to it. Like they're talking about Vivek's stance on Israel. His stance on Israel is we'll support Israel, but we're not sending them money or troops. You know, let us know what you need. Do you need intelligence help? Do you need that sort of thing? And people frame it like all oh, of a against Israel. Well, no. And and frankly, I agree with that position. I, I think if we're going to send money or be involved in a war, let's declare war. Let's go in and win the war and then just be done with it. Well, Donald uh, Trump never said he was going to be a dictator. Yes, okay. he did, Wayne. No. He, On day Donald one, Trump? I'll be a dictator. No, no, no. I'm not talking about a couple of days ago. We're talking about uh, the reason why Sean Han Hannity asked him that is because of the news reports that have been going out that he's going to be one because of all the stuff that he said that he's going to do. So then he said in the Hannity thing that he was going to be a dictator on day one and do those two things. Before that, he wasn't going around saying, I'm going to be a dictator. Okay. He just right. said that for the Hannity thing. And, and we all knew what he was doing. But um, on the campaign trail before that, he's not going around saying he's going to be a dictator. He's just saying, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. The best okay? thing and to take away from that is that narrative up. And that's why Hannity said, are you going to be a dictator? Yep. On day one. This and this. That's it. But what I'm saying is go on any Democrats timeline that's going to talk about President Trump. Every single one is saying President Trump said he would be a dictator on day one. We should listen to him and believe him. I've seen Dan Goldman tweet about it. I've seen Schiff. I've seen Biden. Uh, right, and they're and being they're dishonest. The, and and the, thing, dishonest. the thing to take away from it for me is the traitorous nature of Fox News. Right. Because if you look at this is what you're going to hear from every liberal corporate media outlet. Uh, including leftist Fox News, is Trump is a fascist. He'll be a fascist. If you go look at the at the uh, headlines, they're all the same. 
they're all in cahoots together. Um, you, you saw the article about uh, Trump's a dictatorship, increasingly inevitable. We have to stop him. And, and there's four or five other outlets that have the exact same thing. Uh, it'll be Hitler. He'll be worse than Hitler. You're hearing that all the time. And the thing that gets me the most is the way these leftist media idiots are calling out what they're doing right now. Right. That's what they're warning you that Trump is going to do the same thing that Biden's doing. They're actually saying, here's what would, I said this last night. This is what would make me the maddest. If I was a Democrat, you're telling me I'm so damn stupid that I believe what you're saying right now, what you're already doing. You're accusing this guy and saying, if he gets in, it's going to be like Biden's DOJ. Right. Yep. That well, thing. and I mean, it, it's funny because for those who are saying, oh, no, it's not the thing. So Blue Forward, go on Twitter. It's a big leftist media outlet. They're, they're playing the clip. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. And that's where they cut it. There was a whole conversation after that, but that's where they cut it. And their and their tweet is, this is a huge leftist organization. And they said, Donald Trump says he's going to be a dictator. Believe him. Right. But before that, I'm saying the reason why they got to even that question is because of all the stuff that he said he was going to do. But he never came out and said that he was going to be a dictator. The, the media made up the narrative that he's going to be one because of all the stuff that he is is um, saying he's going to do now. What Hannity did, Hannity, well, and I agree with Steve Bannon on this one, Han, um, Hannity screwed up and asked him about that, given the media that um, potential uh, avenue to cut that. And now you right. see, now he, he said he's going to be a dictator. Now, what I took from that was I took the whole quote and put it in a meme on day, you know, in that way, this is um, Trump blowing off. And we're reacting to the governors taking shots at you yesterday with your president. Yesterday, what is your reaction to the governors taking shots? Well, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, we appreciate you being here. This is a witch hunt, the likes of which probably nobody has ever seen. We've put on a case that is absolutely 100%. There's not a judge in the country that wouldn't have given us a total victory, but there's not a judge in the country that would have even taken this case. This is a witch hunt, and it's a very corrupt trial. Are you only now, we won this case. case. We won this case at the appellate division. Most of them would cover about 90% of the case. We won this case at the appellate division, and this judge refuses to acknowledge the appellate division. They, he said very specifically, we're going forward because there's something wrong here. We won this case. Remember this. Just put it in your head. This case was won at the appellate division, and the judge refuses to do what the appellate division demands he do. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. When you win at the appellate division, at your high court, the judge has to be bound by what their decision is. But we won at the appellate division. Part of that victory was Ivanka was not having to put herself through this, and they ruled that. But the bigger part of it was that about 90 percent, because of statute of limitations, about 90 percent of the case disappears. So remember this. We won the case at the appellate division, the high court, and this judge refuses to acknowledge that victory or that demand. That's very serious. So we're going in now. We have an expert witness, one of the uh, great experts in the country. And I hope you'll all be able to listen to him. But it'll just be another day. If you look at, if you look at the case, uh, we did nothing wrong. There were no victims. The bank loves us. The bank testified. They love us. We did absolutely nothing wrong. We never even defaulted. We never had a default letter sent to us. The bank said we were a perfect customer. The bank didn't even know why they were here. And yet you have people being murdered outside. All over the streets they're being murdered. There's violent crime. And this attorney general who's crazy, she's a lunatic. The attorney general sits here because she knows that she has a judge and no matter all the evidence, that, ju that judge is going to rule in her favor. He ruled against me before the case even started. 
the case hadn't started. He knew nothing, and he ruled against me. The other thing is this. He valued Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, because that was good for her case. At a value of $18 million, when in fact it's worth anywhere from 50 to 100 times that amount. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. But just remember what I said at the beginning. We wanted the appellate division, and this judge refuses to honor that victory or that decision or that demand. Thank you. Why did you say you were that Did you watch the play? Did you say you were on day one? Can you explain that, please? Can you explain that to the people? We got a that, judge problem. He got a judge problem. Um, that last question. Can you explain the dictator on day one? Thank you, Sean. Thank you. I don't know. Fox News set up, I guess. Well, just like just like the Congress, understand that everybody at Fox News knew what was going to happen before he said that. Yeah. Well, right. And and this is my point. We're living in an interesting time where people will say, hey, I saw him say that. And we learned this in the fine people hoax where we're going to have the I'm going to be a dictator hoax where Donald Trump is going to say that one thing, the media is going to dishonestly report it. They're going to put it on cycle. Now, our side, the people watching our show, we saw the whole clip. We understood what he was saying. He says, I'm going to take aggressive action on the border and on oil day one. But half the country isn't going to get that story. And it was a setup by Fox News. It was. And, you know, the other thing that's just as bad, I was watching the clip and the reaction to the clip on CNN. And you have a quote unquote distinguished political analyst on there. Right. Well, that's not what I saw. I saw it was tyrannical what he said. And, and what about his first term? Gee, this guy's a Nazi. It's like, man, you know, you're lying and, and we'll see you when the trials start. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying a large portion of people, that is the only information they're going to get. It. Got it. That's the only yeah. reason we have Biden. Right. Yeah. It's the only and reason I mean, we got Obama. But yeah. that's why. When we talk about sharing the show and giving outreach, like our chat is all, oh, that's not what he said. This is what he said. You guys are 100% right. I guarantee your neighbor that doesn't watch a show like ours doesn't know that. He heard the first eight second soundbite and he believes. And I've, I've told you guys this story before, but it, it's remarkable. The fine people hoax. I remember sitting down with a friend of mine who's a Joe Biden voter and playing the full clip playing the second sentence where he says, he says, I'm not talking about the Nazis. White supremacists are awful people. We condemn them fully. And I said, there was the full clip. And he sat there and he had this look on his face and he goes, Oh my God, they lied to me. I'm like, yeah, crazy. Isn't it? Like they kept, and, but then a month later we got together and he still referenced the fine people. And I said, I showed you that video last time, but he had forgot because he had another month of CNN playing it on loop. Three, di three days ago, James Carville referenced that same thing. Right. Three days ago. Or four, maybe. Right. You know, it, it, it's... Uh, that's why I say I'm not worried about the votes. I'm worried about the, the whole empire, man. The whole thing is... It's all lined up against us. We're, we got a big fight. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying give up either. I'm just saying it's going to be a right. big fight. Right. Well, and I think everybody's got to get ready to understand what winning for us looks like winning for us looks like regular American citizens wake up and all that targeting you saw on the MAGA folks all of a sudden goes on other folks, you know, and, and look, it's going to get exhausting, right? Because let me tell you what winning for us looks like. It looks like riots in the street. That's what it looks mm -hmm. like. Have a plan. If you live in a blue city, have a plan to GTFO <laughs> because it's going to happen. They're already signaling it's going to happen. Um, these crowds that are in the street have different uniforms at home. They have Black Lives Matter uniforms. They have Occupy Wall Street uniforms. They have Teachers Unions uniforms. They have Antifa. Un it's the same people. Right. And they're ready. And they're cheap. It doesn't cost much to pay them. Yeah. So well, I'm just saying. And it's funny, too, because 
a, a lot of people that are supporting this ideology, I mean, they're where we were 2014, 15, you know, they, they don't realize they're being sold a bill of goods. Democrats are trying to spend us into oblivion. And so are Republicans, Jason. Or Republicans, right. But but I'm just saying the, the Democrats, uh, on the Democrat side, it, when I see these young people celebrating free money being given out, I just chuckle because I'm like, I'm old. I'm 50. I, what do I got? 20 years left? 30 years left? You're going to be dealing. This is going to ruin your life. You're not going to be able to buy a house. You're not inflated. And that's where they're at right now. They can't. Right. I remember having a conversation with my son while Obama was president and Obama was talking about repaying college loans. And my son was all in on it. I said, what? I pulled the car over. I said, listen, <laughs> you, you borrowed that money off of that banker. You yeah. signed your name that you were going to pay him back. Why should my neighbors have to pay your loan? And he changed his mind and went, no. Uh, I bet. Yeah. Okay, okay. Can, can I'll change can my mind one, too. You... Can I share <laughs> one seriously good positive thing about Ron DeSantis? One good idea he had? Yeah. Last night he in the debate, and I saw that, I'm like, that's a really good answer. He said, uh, let the universities fund the loans. Let them be in charge. He said, let the universities be the one that funds the loans especially all these expensive universities. It used, to be, that, it used to be that way. It used to right. be that way. When my father died and I started reviewing all his records, actually when my mother died, I got all the records and everything for our family. And I started going through my father's paperwork. He bought my house with a loan from the University of Pittsburgh. Really? Right. Yeah, he, he was assistant chancellor there. He was real high up there, but he... That there's paperwork in there. He's requesting the money and they came back and approved it and at this nice. much interest. And, you know, it wasn't always the way it is now. But it's funny because as I've talked about student loan forgiveness, if anybody's going to forgive it, it should be the institutions, not right. the government. You know, they're sitting on millions and billions of dollars. And if they didn't provide a service that was worth it for the student, then but, take it back from them. Not but just, just to highlight something that I didn't know until the, the mail came. Uh, when my son got his student loan through financial situation, about two years into his college, he got a letter saying the government had taken over his loan. Yeah. When was this? Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see. He's been out probably 10 years ago. The reason why I say it is because I remember when Obama did that. Yeah. Obama cut out the middleman. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. All that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. And it was uh, Sorbanes. It was that gay congressman, Barney Flank. Barney yeah. Flank. I was going to say, when you say gay congressman, you need to be a little more specific. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Openly, o openly gay, flaming <laughs> Barney Flank. Yeah, that was a lot. You remember, you remember his last day on the, um, on the floor? Didn't he wear like a tank top or something? Or a Yeah, he wore a sweatshirt that uh, God showed his... Mm, but he didn't have a bra, so everything was going that way, kind of like. And he had on a coat and like a straw, but everything was going that way. He was running a gay whorehouse out of his house, wasn't he? Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, Barney. Oh, Barney Congress. He was right, right at home in D.C. <laughs> Probably ate a lot of pizza, too. Oh. <coughs> And trophies, baby. Um, okay, so you would say that the debate last night was entertaining. I would say it's an eight out of ten. You must watch if you like politics. You, I, I mean, understand you're watching a show. Nobody, everybody on that stage has the same odds as the three of us of being president of the United States. But it was a really entertaining show, and the clips don't do it justice for. For just like Ron DeSantis was like peak awkwardness, and then he'd give a speech like Rain Man, and then he'd get interrupted and he'd go back into like his brain broke and he'd go back into awkward. And Chris Christie was my favorite because it was a man who was like working his last day and he's like, he he's looked standing it. there, he's like, I don't really care what I say, <laughs> I'm gonna say anything because I know I'm done. Vivek, Vivek told him, Go, man, go get a meal. <laughs> he did, but they started. He's like, why are you up here? You have no chance. Go to the buffet. 
<laughs> Can I change the subject for a second? Because we don't have much time. Yeah, I wanted. To, we're not getting the good good news from the corporate anti-Israel media, and I just wanted to report something. And you can go check it out. It's at Red State has an article up uh, by Bonchi, whoever that is. But it basically has video. It says Hamas terrorists surrender in mass, and the photos and videos are telling. And when you scroll down, you see photos. They're giving up. Israel is winning bigly in uh, in Gaza, and they don't mess around. You know how these jihadists they like to have bomb vests and suicide vests and things like that. They just strip them all down to their underwear. Yep. Did you see they're flooding all the tunnels too? Yeah, I did. What are they flooding the tunnels with? It's water, seawater. Seawater. Really? Yeah, they got a big series of pumps. I'll send you the video. And they're just pumping. And understand that your government is against that. Right. A lot of people in your government are against Israel doing what they have to do finally to get rid of this cancer. Uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, I hate using words everybody else uses, but it's as existential for them. Wow. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think this conflict too is such a powder keg. I mean, it's a, it's a holy war that's been going on for thousands of years. And just remember this, when you're thinking about Israel, understand it has nothing to do with Israel. This is about you. This is about Christians, Catholics, and Jews in the United States of America and in Europe. Nobody gives two stinks about Israel. It's this big. This is about us. This is about jihad and the Ummah. Well, watch- I was going to say, if you go back and watch any historical documentaries, the vast majority of wars, it was always about two things, taking over the land or it was religious. And, and money. It has both. And money. And money, yeah. Well, that's the land part. Like, you're going to get the resources. If you look at the emerging Muslim leaders, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey has said numerous times he wants to head the caliphate. That that tells you all you need to know about what these people want. And they all want the same thing. Um, there's no... They, they, they try to trick you by delineating Hezbollah and the Houthis. And does anybody even know where Hezbollah is? Probably not. It's in Lebanon. The yeah, Houthis, no. where, are the, where are the Houthis from? Yemen. I mean, this is, uh, and then they want to tie Iran in. They've been wanting to get into war with Iran forever. But just understand that this isn't just about the Saturday people. Because after they're done with the Saturday people, they come for the Sunday people. And that's yeah. us. Yeah. Saturday people. Their words. <laughs> Their words. I got to yeah. say, as all this has been going on, I've been learning more about Islam, watching mm-hmm. a lot of documentaries. Good for you. Yeah, I, I watched a great one. Morgan Freeman did it. I mean, if you can imagine Morgan Freeman talking to you about Islam. And, mm-hmm. and it's funny because it's older and it was after 9-11, so they were propagandizing it, uh, where they're like, oh, Islam's a, a nation of peace. But it was kind of like, the mem- remember when CNN says they were mostly peaceful protests with the fire in the backgrounds? Mm-hmm. It would be funny because even Morgan Freeman's like, you know, a lot of people misconstrue mm-hmm. some of these verses, and Islam's really a nation of peace. And then he would read the verse where it's like, if they don't succumb to Stay us, they off their head. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like, this can be interpreted a lot of ways. And I'm like, I'm just going to go by what it says. <laughs> like, look, look behind the rock, snuff out the Jew behind the rock. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's a Mm -hmm. fascinating religion because a lot of the the principles that they want in the religion are very similar to Christian. Like they outlaw interest. They think interest is the devil and they do not allow interest in their society. Really? Yeah. Bankers are out, which kind of explains some of the people they have conflicts with. Well, we always thought that bankers are out. it It also explains their way of life. Right. And their and their quality of life, which is zero. Right, yeah. One of the things that people don't understand about, you were talking about the banks earlier. You look at where banks came from. They came from industrialists. They came from making steel and and making and digging coal and things like that. That's who started the first banks. That's where J.P. Morgan, Andrew Carnegie, that's where they all came from. They all came from industry. So you have to, yeah, banks have gone run amok. 
But if it wasn't for the banks, we wouldn't have the quality of life we have right now. Is what I'm trying to say. It's good. And it needs to be fixed. I understand that. I'm not smart yeah, enough to it, fix it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does need to be fixed. Because I don't know you the know, banking's been going on for a long time. Huh? Banking. I mean, if I'm you talking about American banking. I'm talking about our quality of life. Yeah. And the only re the reason I say that is because I'm driving through a town and I like to look at architecture. And I'm Me looking too. at this bank that's like third, fifth bank or something. And I always go up and look at the soffit and fascia. Because back in the day, they used to chisel words into the stone. And that bank yeah. was Andrew Carnegie's bank. It says Car Andrew Carnegie National Bank. And I'm going, he started all this. We didn't have banks like that before. We had some banks. But, I mean, uh, you look at where the bankers come from. They ran the railroads. They ran the steel mills, the coal mines. You have to make something to have a bank. Well, the thing with banks, too, it, it's when government got involved with the Federal Reserve. And then when they started doing the fractional banking and I mean, to oversimplify it, if you put a thousand dollars in the bank, the bank keeps a hundred and can and then can loan out nine hundred. And, and even though that nine hundred they don't have and then you take that nine hundred, put it back in the bank, they can loan out eight twenty. And then second slap in the face, they used to pay you for that. Yeah, they used and, to pay and they you. don't anymore. Right. But I mean, uh, an actual, you only have $1,000, but that money is loaned and reloaned because of fractional banking. So that $1,000 has an impact in the economy of 10, 10 times by the time it gets down. You want, you want to hear something scary? I went to, I bought a, a garage and I bought it off an Amish guy. And I was going to give him a cashier's check or something like that. Dude wanted cash. Straight up. I went to my bank, the, six, the sixth largest bank in the country. Mm -hmm. And I went in there. I said, I need eight eight thousand dollars in cash. And she panicked. I don't she panicked. Have. She said, I, I have to go check. And and she went back in the vault and they had it. But just eight thousand dollars. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it's a pain in the butt counting eight thousand dollars in twenties mm -hmm. or hundreds, hundreds. Eighty hundred dollar bills. They probably they probably made a phone call on you too. Probably <laughs> anything over five thousand dollars, they have to, the bank fills out a suspicious activity report, and you get reported. Oh, it's ten, things. but it but it's five now. They yeah, plan the plan is to drop it to six hundred dollars. Six hundred, right? Right. Yeah, six hundred. It I used to be ten thousand when I was following it. Yeah, yeah. That's why I always used to say to our donors, make sure you donate under ten thousand dollars, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. Nine hundred ninety-nine. Yeah. Yeah. Now they got to do four thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, what are y'all cooking this weekend? Oh man, I'm not sure what Jen's cooking. Um, she's got. <laughs> we got the kids coming over Sunday, so he, Justin lets us know what he wants for dinner. He comes over every couple weeks, so. I'm excited to learn what he picks. What are you guys cooking? You actually cook good stuff. I don't know. I got a, a two pound chuck roast that I'm going to grind. I'm going to make it in a burger and I'm going to make a, a, a see, you got to like simple things in life too. Hmm. I'm going to make some hamburger helper with one okay. pound of it. And I'm going to make some chili with the other pound. There we go. There we go. When you make chuck in a burger hutch, do you just run the burger through the grinder or do you put anything in it? No, I cut off. The connecting tissue, like there's fat and then there's what they call gristle. Right. Yeah. I, so I just cut that out and then I cut it into squares. No, I just run it right through. Man. That's pure. That's the reason I'm doing it. Um, do you have Cracker Barrel where you are? Yeah. You have Cracker Did you Barrel? just call me a cracker? I haven't no. eaten there. I haven't eaten there in I years. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't yeah. do that in front of you. Um, <laughs> love, gotta, love that, gotta love that fireplace in there. Yeah, man. Listen, Cracker Barrel has got the best hash brown casserole that I have ever tasted. Really? Yes. And then on top of that, the pancakes are the bomb at Cracker Barrel. They are. They. I mean, and I don't even like pancakes. I don't. I don't. I don't like pancakes. But um. I spread that butter on there and I put that I put that syrup on there. I was like, man, I feel like I'm home. Cracker Barrel. The only thing about Cracker Barrel, it's the only place I ever got served apples for breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cinnamon apples. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, well, actually, while, while we're talking food, too, this is a continuation <laughs> of yesterday's conversation. So we get together with my stepson every other weekend on Sunday because he works during the week, third shift. And then uh, my stepdaughter and, and her significant other, they work weekends. So we usually get together Thursday, Friday. So we're getting together Friday and her significant other, Ben, he's a great cook. Like mm. I like he watches cooking shows. He's he's really good. Uh, but we, I told you guys, we always drive by that Hardee's and we can never stop because we're always going to their dinner. So he says this week, he goes, you guys are coming up for dinner. We're going to Hardee's. Nice. So there, nice. there is the one nice Hardee's in the entire tri-state area <laughs> that the food is edible. And I get to eat there Friday night. I am so excited. I don't even know what to get. I like that one. What the hell's the name of that place? Uh, I'll think about it. I'll, I'll remember. It's a breakfast joint, man. Uh, don't know. Uh, I have. No. Uh, Denny? Denny's? Denny's? Uh, let me Google uh, this real quick. <laughs> what's the sausage one? Uh, Bob Evans. Bob Evans? Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh the Homestead. <laughs> the homestead. Oh, the sauce that that sausage gravy at Bob Evans could stop a war. I know, right? Right. Yeah. What? Oh, Waffle House. That's it. Waffle that House. Oh my god. There That's my favorite. Place. I love some Waffle House. Look, I remember when I was growing up. I remember Waffle House. There are no Waffle Houses around here. It's all I hot now. But I remember we used to smell the syrup on the outside before we walked into the Waffle House. I mean, when you walked there, it's like, man, they must have wiped down the walls with syrup, man. It, man, it smells good in here. It was hot, buttery syrup that you the smelled. Thing, you know? The thing that was funny about that is you're talking to the waitress like, yeah, let me get two eggs over easy and some hash browns uh, coated and covered and, and uh, a coffee. And she yeah. says, oh, okay. Two over easy! <laughs> hash brown! <laughs> it's like, dude, that was between me and you. Right. No, no, no. If you go to the Waffle House, you sit at that counter. You yeah. sit at that little seat where the dude, you can literally reach out and touch his back if you need to. Oh, and they're flipping them, them bags around. I love that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was nice. Man, I, man, I, man, I remember that growing up, just just driving. Just, I mean, it was like a, um, a, a, a windmill type a place, the Waffle House. It was, it looked like a Panacookin windmill. Are huh? Are you talking the windmill Panacookin? That was a restaurant that had that. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. No. Oh. It was the last time I was at the last time I was at IHOP, I was impressed with the omelets. They were, like battle, they were like battleships. <laughs> no. <laughs> See. I was like, this is "Yeah, that. I got a dead body in here." <laughs> <laughs> this is somebody wrapped up in a rug, man. What's going on here? <laughs> See, for us, IHOP sucks because our local <laughs> franchiser is awful. So if you go in there, it's dirty and the food's Ugh. terrible. That's and IHOP is great food. Like if you travel and it's good IHOP, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jason, you got till the fifteenth uh, because in Minnesota they have an event. Uh, where they name their snow plows. Oh, nice. Oh, there you go. There so you go. by the 15th, you got to have your submission in. I, they're redoing the state flag and seal, too. Oh, they're going to put the Muslim green in there? They need something more inclusive <laughs> than the loon. Get ready for it to turn green. It's going to be a green flag. Right. Uh, and there'll oh probably, probably be a sword on there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to hell. I'm glad I'm not 18 anymore. I'm, 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 I'm going to differ with Chris Christie. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it funny you say that? Because you look at these kids, and it's like, oh, you guys. I mean, if you're an 18-year-old uh, right now, you're going to see the financial you're gonna slave. America. You're going to be a slave. They've, they've set you up to be stupid. You have no marketable skills. They are setting you up to eat the bugs. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that goes for all you people that think you're educated at these fake colleges. Well, and we've, we've talked about that repeatedly, but they don't teach you, like, what are you going to do to produce for the tribe? So what's your fallback? Are you going to do carpentry, or you think that Mexican guy is going to work harder than you? I, I know the answer. <laughs> right. Because we've taken your work ethic away, too. 
We right. told you to work from home. Yep. Yeah. I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to roll out of here. We're getting ready to take take our weekend, and we'll let you know what we do on Monday. Um, as I said, y'all have a beautiful weekend. Um, I'm celebrating 55 on Sunday, so uh, my Cowboys play Sunday night. I'm planning on watching them. Uh, I'm not going to. I want to win. I want to win the game bad. I do. I I got to get the, the Eagles got to go down. Sorry, Hutch. Um, no, I don't like the Eagles. You take them out. Okay. They're okay. Bet. That's bet. the worst team with the worst fans in the NFL. I know, I know it is. Yeah. Yeah. We got to take them out. We got to take them out. Uh, but um, whatever y'all do, make sure that y'all have a safe weekend. Uh, don't get in trouble because, you know, this is a poor show. We ain't, we ain't got no money to bail you out. <laughs> we pray for you hard. But we ain't got no money to bail you out. Um, last thoughts, Jay and Hutch, and then we out. Uh, folks, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate our audience. You guys are the best. And uh, make sure you share the, sh- share the show. And if you're looking for something, eaglebrookchurch.com Sunday morning. Join us on the online service. If, you, uh, if you're looking for a good non-woke church who is just talking about Jesus is Lord and and gives all glory to God. I, I'm really impressed with this church. We've gone there for a while, so it's a uh, pretty solid. All right, uh, I'll say happy birthday, Wayne. I remember when you turned 50, and it was a pretty big deal. My, how time flies. I know. Right? Uh, uh, I got a little bit of good news in a in a plethora of bad news every day that we bring. Maloney's Italy officially withdraws from Communist China's Belt and Road Global Domination Project. It. That's a good sign, folks. Good sign. Great sign. Yeah, they, um, the conservative leader over there, the woman, Maloney, the one that said that she was going to do it. Uh, but I just hope and pray that nothing happens to her. All right. Uh, so, you know what I'm saying? All right. Um, y'all take care. To my peoples, God bless.